Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Team Talk. Oh, disclaimer, man. I know, oh. but I still have to talk to this. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot be ignorant all your life. Oh, yeah. I can't do two things at once, you know. God, this so. prepping before the show thing. <laughs> What prepping? You really need to try it sometime. <laughs> but we have an hour, to be fair. I can only read a bit of it. Views or opinion, espresso team. Espresso? Oh, that's espresso. all I get. Espresso. There you go. Team. You're in shot now, Cap. I'm in shot now, am I? You're in shot now. It makes a bloody difference, does it? Make it makes a bloody bonus. Good evening, all. <laughs> This is Team Talk, in case you'd missed it. <laughs> if you didn't know what it was, well, it's that show where we just all sit and have a bit chat to one another. And you people are our guests tonight, so I hope you're all sitting comfortably and you've got a drink and your favourite vape beside you and you can join in. Throw the questions out you like. It's as if you're all sitting around the table with us. That's what Team Talk's all about. There's no written schedule or whatever, nothing, right? So I think on that note, we'll go to the titles and then we'll start up after that. Can we have the titles, please, Mark? And I'll introduce everybody after that. Uh, Possibly. Possibly. I'm not promising. Yeah. yeah. We out. It's Team Talk. That's Very nice. I'm reading and scripting. Helping the chat. You could be Who's got their feet on the table? Get your feet Can off the bloody table. Get your feet off the table. Can't ask if put their feet on the table? I don't yes, know. they can. They can. We can't. Look at them. We're professionals. Yeah, not the we? I mean, how are <laughs> Right, guys and gals. Tonight we're missing Tim. If you know where he is, let me know we're looking for him. We're missing Davey because he's not our grand. He had a an op last week and he's still not quite round after all that. So this Mark, who will, will go to say hi to you. Say hello, Mark. He's, hello, he's, a, he's a technical guy, you know. He's a technical <laughs> guy. He knows what he's doing. We didn't. I'm professional, I is. <laughs> and then who's usually sitting doing the presenting, and I think he still is doing all the production work, are you, or is Mark doing it tonight? No, that would be me still. You're yeah. still doing it? Yeah. I'm pleased about that. I'm glad somebody's <laughs> in control. <laughs> so we we'll have Daz. Say hello, Daz. Hello, Daz. Hello, everybody. And, of course, we've got Self here who makes sense of everything. Thank God somebody else. Oh, may, may make sense Who of everything. Who sent him in? Par well done, chat. You found him. <laughs> I, I think I was stuck between two people. I don't know. You were stuck between two people, right? Stand up. Who did it? It was yeah. one of you in who chat. Took, who took me? <laughs> I am and in a good in, in a good way. I hope in a good way. <laughs> so say hello to Tim, folks. Tim, say and hello. Did I get to say hello? Did I say hello? I don't know. Did you say don't hello? I never said hello. Well, it's not my fault. You're too bloody slow to say I hello. Got, I, I got PM'd by somebody and it confused me. <laughs> <laughs> Do what? what? There is a sign above the chat room. Do not refrain from sending PMs to present us during shows. It can be very distracting. Oh, you see, we've just proved the point. And what? of course, we've got. Some... Shut up! What? We've got Mr. Dawn. Joining us tonight. Say hello, Dave. Oh, hello. Good evening. How are you all? Is everybody well? I trust you both. Dave, 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 and Dave. Nice to see you. Hello. Good evening. How are you doing? Hello, so. oh, Dave. Now, just in yeah. case we're upset, we're going to go back to Sav. <laughs> right. Say hello. Say hello. I just have to read out what Moonlit said. He's got it spot on. Yes, yeah, Sav, who makes sense of everything. Sav staring cluelessly at screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's about the gist of it, yes. Just don't forget to say hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> right, so everybody said hello. We did. 
Oh, Moon, it yeah. says, cat, do not refrain. What was I refraining from? No, you I said, do not refrain. refrain. I, I don't refrain, do I? Don't, no, you never one thing I don't do. <laughs> The one thing she no. never did today, she doesn't refrain. Hell, oh, she goes on with the nails, you know. I like it. Oh, I didn't remember that. I've got through the shots. You have to uh, change yes, the shots. Yes, that's your job. Mm -hmm. You have to change the shots. Yes, yes that's what you don't get paid for, does. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> it's what you don't get paid for. That'd be right. Right. Um, distracting like talking over the ads. Sprotty, we don't talk over the ads. We don't. What, what on earth do these people insinuate these <laughs> things for? I have no idea. <laughs> Must be lagging a fair bit here. Chat telling me what happened before it happens. It's because we're all psychic. Yeah. Ah. They didn't know that. No. Nah. No. We're all psychic. I mean, I knew That's you lot were playing right team. Mm -hmm. You knew I was... Mark? That's close to the right word, anyway. You were thinking psychotic, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. Mark was thinking... That was the one. <laughs> I can't spell that, so I wouldn't be thinking it. <laughs> so, tonight, what are we going to talk about, guys and girls? This is an obvious one, isn't it? What, non-smoking day? That bloody thing, yeah. Yeah, we've got to talk about that. What's your opinion, Tim? Um, and what have your experiences been of no smoking day? No smoking day. Well, of course, I haven't been in the shop today, so I've not really seen anything going on there at all. Um, no. But uh, I certainly haven't smoked today, if, it's, if that's helpful. Um, and on non-smoking day in the past, even when I was a smoker when it first started, I still took no notice of it at all. Well, I didn't smoke until about lunchtime, so I did my bit. So, I don't, I don't see, I don't see it as being. Um, a, a, I mean, it's, it's a great, it's a great way of, of putting people on the spot if they're going to do the NRT route, and it's a great day to start. It's, it's a day for your diary, that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, I mean, I've, I've heard bits on the radio today about people giving you three quid for every cigarette you don't smoke on a day like today. Who's given me... Who's well, given apparently, me? Apparently, <coughs> apparently the government are threatening to pay people for not smoking. Are they back it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got five years worth of things. I was going to say, there's, there's plenty to come, isn't it? If it's three pounds a cigarette, then we're all going to be well off and we can go and have a holiday somewhere. Yeah, hang on a minute. Just a minute, funny lad. <laughs> well, off, well off. Hang on. If the government is going to give three pound of our bloody money, taxpayers... Uh, of course, money, yes, of course. Well, nobody's going to be well off. <laughs> bloody ridiculous. I'll tell you what, I hate the very notion of no smoking gear. I always have and I always will. Mm -hmm. It's coercion and propaganda and the removal of free choice. Even worse, and I'm going to upset a few folks here, mm -hmm. I've seen vendors today linking no smoking gear with ACs and I think you should be shot. Ridiculous. They're not mm -hmm. about no smoking. They're about continuing a nicotine habit is what they're about. It's got nothing to do with quitting smoking. Jesus. Yeah, they're, they're, we're just swapping the way we do our smoking. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the article in the Daily Mail that um, they're going to start paying people to stop smoking, give them mm. um, financial incentives, and they're going to pay us fatties to stop eating. <laughs> Apparently. But what are you going to spend the money on them if you're not going to spend it? Food of bags. Food I'll spend all my fatty money on cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> then, then go for a slap up meal with your cigarette money. Actually, yeah. I'm going to go and go take myself straight off to McDonald's when I get paid. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard such. Nonsense in my life. I, I don't know where they get the idea or the notion that's actually going to work because, I mean, like any, um, they're going to use the addiction word here, any addiction, you're going to lie through your teeth, aren't you? Mm. You know, if it's free cash, it's it's great. It's, you're just going to use it to buy your fags with. You're yeah. going to get all the non smokers going in going, I haven't smoked any today. I have no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh but on top of that as well, check, though, check me like. breath. Check me breath. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> any test you like. There's no nicotine in mouses. Mm. But it's going to make those who already smoke, who say it might be a twenty a day, all of a sudden become a sixty a day smoker. Mm. 
good text yeah. work to get the 60 a day does, man. It took me at least a fortnight. <laughs> no, but they don't have to be a 60 a day smoker. They've just got to say to you, so they've got the money for it. And I only smoke 20, so that's 40 tabs you always mm. fuck. That's it. What, exactly. what, 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 what are they going to do? Get at us or somebody like that on it? Oh, oh, yes. That'll work. Probably, well, yeah. my, I reckon they're going to get <laughs> They're going to have a drone following you everywhere with a camera. <laughs> they already do that. No. Mm. Per a, a personal drone. Your very own personal drone service. Well, if, they, if they are going to start doing this, I'm, I'm starting smoking again. <laughs> Just starting it's, a job, it's a job, isn't it? It's a job. <laughs> Absolutely. What are you going to do? They've the lied, and I mean lied, about smoking for donkey's years. They've lied about second-hand smoking, they've lied about cancer. I mean, did you know, officially, I've got the official rates, how many smokers do you think get lung cancer? Well, well can I just say that I, I'll answer this first because I heard on the radio. On the radio there was an ad which I was listening in the car the day and it said one in two smokers. Yeah. That's the yeah, one. well, That's it's the not. It's one in seven. One in seven. One in seven get lung cancer. Mm. 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 Oh dear. I mean, the, pro well, the I... propaganda says that uh, one in two get the cancer, and the one that survives lives an agonising, disease-ridden existence till they die. Yeah, like every Guinness Book of Records record holder for the longest lived human being, every last one of them has been a smoker. Mm. Yeah. Not just mm. one or two a day either. <laughs> no. 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 Well, no. I must admit, I was watching Doc Cotton last night on EastEnders lighting up a tab, and she was in deep concentration. I thought, you know, for a woman in your 90s, you look canny for all the cigarettes you've smoked. Right, mm. sorry. Mm. You know? Well preserved. It's a formaldehyde. Form <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Uh, yeah. Yes. Damp Heaven sent me a PM before and said, you do realise it's international no smoking day? And I said, no, I don't, because I haven't been told anything about it. Um, has anybody heard anything about it? I've heard I about it, but it hasn't really registered on my radar, the same as it never, none of these things. And a lot of people in chat are saying the same thing. When there were smoking normal cigarettes, it didn't register. Um, because at the end of the day, your smoking habits are nobody else's business but yours. Yeah, but I mean, an international... Um, sorry, did I say no smoking? It should have been vaping day. I right. got that wrong. Um, international vaping day. Now, I haven't heard anything. No. no. no and, I, I mean, the last two years, there's been a lot of fuss, but, you know, prior to... Um, National Vaping Day, mm. and before that, International Vaping Day, and it was uh, a big thing, you know, which we all enjoyed, and we brought guests on, and we yeah. spoke to people in America, and all kinds of things, didn't we? I mean, mm -hmm. there's the thing that was going around Facebook is the only thing that I've heard of, um, the International Start Vaping Day, um, but do you know? Oh, I've just broke my screen. Hang on. Personally, <laughs> I was going to say something else. <laughs> personally, it, it hit a couple of raw nerves for me. Um, the word and the vape for victory over smoking word and it it. I know what the intention was, but it it just didn't sit right for me. I don't like the bordering on victimising smokers side, and I know that wasn't the intention, but it can be easily taken that way. Well, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, the majority of people, when they read a headline, read the headline and then read the rest of whatever's there in terms of what the headline said. And when it says victory over smoke, and I'm sorry, again, that's latching into the whole uh, victory over smoke, and that Ash has been promulgating, and they are trying to coerce people and propagandise people into packing in a habit that everybody's fully informed about because nobody on the planet doesn't know what the risks of smoking with tobacco is. I, I, you'd be hard to push, hard push to find anybody in the first or second worlds that doesn't know what the risks of smoking are purported to be. And on that basis, if they decide they still want to do it, 
then that's entirely up to them, and they should have the freedom to be able to do that. Um, it's exactly the same as parachuting. I know what the risks are. I choose not to do it. Mm. The same as abseiling. I know what the risks are. I choose not to do it. And the same as that city down skiing that they're doing in Sochi there at the minute. I've seen what the risks are. There's not a hope in hell you're going to get me to do that. <laughs> but, <coughs> you know, if, if knowing what the risks are, and we've been propagandised for the last 30 odd years, knowing what the risks are, people choose to smoke, that is their choice. The only thing I will say is, they should also have the choice to reduce the risk, if they so desire, without reducing the enjoyment. And I've said for a long, long time, these things are just smoking with the death taken out. That's all it is. Mm. No yeah, I've got to agree. I mean, the, uh, lately I've seen a lot of, um, uh, like, a push of, you know, are you uh, <clears throat> not, like, kind of, like, are you thinking of, like, you know, coming off cigarettes? It's kind of, like, really in your face of, are you a smoker? Why don't you try an ASIC? <laughs> But I wouldn't go along that way personally because, and I always, I've always, always said from the very, very beginning is that I respect every, any and every single smoker because they're not stupid. They know themselves what they're doing. If that's what they want to do, that's completely up to them. Mm -hmm. um, but the last thing, and I think if I was a smoker now, the last thing I would want is anybody pushing it in my face because I think, and I think we'll all agree that <clears throat> When you're a smoker and someone's trying to push something on you to get you off six, it makes you smoke all the more. Mm. You know, that's what I found anyway. I mean, my uncle, well, Alan's uncle, who was an avid anti-smoker, tried for 10 years to get me to come off six. And the more he tried, the more I just did dug my heels in and thought, no, absolutely not. If I want to do this, it's my choice. I don't do it in your house. I completely respect your wishes, but please respect mine at the same time because I feel that so many people don't do that. Mm. Yeah, uh, Moonlit and Chat has said, if I want to smoke, I'll smoke. If I want to drink, I'll drink. If I want to consume illicit substances, I'll bloody well do it. And Vaping Sam says, I am for rehumanizing smokers. I can say that, for I am one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the dehumanization of smokers, the, the denigration of them, um, the whole denormalization um, has been one of the very worst things governments internationally has embarked upon in the last few years. And the bottom line about it is, it's exactly the same tactics that were used in Warsaw in 1938 um, to dehumanise a whole population of Jews in Warsaw. We used exactly the same propagandising tactics to denormalise, dehumanise and denigrate. And that's what they've done to smokers. And, you know, I never ever tried any of the stop smoking aids. I never tried gum, I never tried patches, mm -hmm. I never tried any of them in an attempt to quit. I only ever used any of them in order to be able to go on four hour aeroplane flights without getting attacks of the heavy jabies because I felt I wanted to at the time. That was the bottom line. And there was nothing on the face of the planet that was ever going to persuade me to quit. And I still don't think I have quit. I have switched to something that I find to be preferable it tastes nicer for me. The upside, the, the, the byproducts, if you like, for me, are that I'll probably live longer. I get my grandson across just about seven days a week. The house doesn't have the nasty layer of brown whatever it was all over the place. But that doesn't mean if somebody, in fact, tell you something, when the ITV crew came around here, there was two of them were smoking. And they were going to go outside and it was chucking it down. You wouldn't have sent the dog out. And I said, no, I've got an ashtray, son, you're all right in here. And they just looked at us funny. I said, have you not quit, mate? I said, no. In here beats the heart of a smoke. Mm. For goodness sake. There you go. How many people are pissed off now? <laughs> <laughs> this chat going on, um, people are saying, well, without this type of thing aimed at smokers, how will they know about A6? And... The other side of the, the chat is saying, well, there's informant without preaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's it, getting that 
balance right. Don't go in and telling people what you're doing is wrong. You should be doing this. It makes you good. Because mm. I would have straight away went, yeah, and who bloody hell do you think you are? Mm. It's not. I, I feel like it should. It's not as much of you know. I mean, it's a very good point of like, you know, how best to inform them. But it's not just about informing them. It's it's if they want to do it. If they don't want to do it, you're fighting the lost battle. Don't try and preach, you know, to convert people to do something that they might not necessarily be comfortable to do it. They'll have to do that in their own time. You know, it's great that a lot of people out there see A6 for what they're worth. It's brilliant. I totally, totally get that. But not everybody yet does. You know, and I strongly believe that in time it will change, but not everybody is going to be like that. Mm. And, you know, to go down the line of saying to them, look what I've got, isn't it brilliant that you should try it, you should do it, and this, it's not going to work. It really isn't. And if it does in, in the try it, great, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to carry it on. You know, they may well go back to smoking, and I've seen that as well, and that's because... I did exactly that with my brother, and my brother got so downhearted with it, with atomizers, because he didn't understand it, that he just quit vaping altogether and took the six back up, and that's perfectly okay if he wants to do it. But that's from personal experience what I learned. Well, I read um, an article in the Northern Echo today, which very much sums up a lot of us vapors, very much so. The, the writer of this is the actual reporter for the newspaper and she went to a doctor with a chest infection and doctors gave the usual lecture, you know, um, and she decided as it was National Non-Smoking Day, she'd actually give an e-cig a go. And I love what she's written here. I'm just going to read this one paragraph out and see how many people relate to this one paragraph. I've never wanted to give up smoking, to be perfectly honest. Life can be miserable enough without depriving oneself of its simple pleasures, and for me, pleasurable moments invariably involve cigarettes, especially the one that gets you started in the morning and the one with the relaxing cup of tea or glass of wine at the end of the day and the one that stops you cracking when you're nearing your stress limit. And, well, you get my point. How many of us relate to that? Totally. Completely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, and you're that's there. how easy a switch can be made. Yoda has just put in the chat. I wouldn't try converting smokers, but if they don't know about the option, then aren't you robbing them of something in a way? No, I, I honestly don't because I'd, nobody preached to me when I looked for an ASIC. I went out there and looked for it. You know, I looked for the alternative that was out there. I'd heard about it very briefly. I went out there, I researched it, I bought my first kit and I went from there. So I honestly don't think you need to do that. I think that those who really want to make that transition will make that transition no problem without somebody having to go out there and actively, you know... Well, you sort of lead by example, don't you? Show them. Mm -hmm. Show them what it is, if they ask, if they're interested, mm -hmm. and then from there, the, it's the choice is theirs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think that, given the fact of, I mean, I've been vaping just over two years, the availability now of e and how much e are widely been like, on the TV and that, very, very recently, that it's probably a lot more people now know about it than what they did even two years ago, let alone five years ago. Mm. The thing about it is, I mean, did anybody as a smoker go and try and convert non-smokers into being smokers? I don't think they ever did, not as adults. Or did you try and convert somebody else that smoked your brand? No, no. we never did. No. I was just mm -hmm. like, okay, you like that, I personally don't, but... Mm. Um, unless, why, why unless you were constantly grabbing cigs off them. Yeah, <laughs> then you try and convert them to a bit nicer. Yes, if you were smoking OPs, you would want the OP to be smoking your brand, I suppose. But no, I mean, we never, we never kind of did any of that. 
And mm-hmm. you know, going back a lot of years, you didn't buckle under the pressure. And I, I probably actually owe our German viewers a little bit of an apology. I should have said an Austrian and his uh, cohort that, that went off the rails in Warsaw. My apologies for that. There was no offence meant. I really should have said an Austrian. I just don't want to invoke his name. Um, Can we go and have some uh, a set of ads and then we'll come back and we'll chat about this subject a little bit more. Not Austrians, but... <laughs> oh. I suppose so. Thank you, Mark. Back in a minute. And no talk and normally add to you, Rob. Is it hard? Why would we do such a thing? No, I'm sorry, I'm no. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> All this giggling is supposed to be serious. Oh, I'm going to get the staff in this year's mark. Somebody give Daz a tissue, he's leaking. <laughs> Daz a squid. I'll be banned shortly. <laughs> Daz will get banned. Yeah, he'll be banned by the EU, yeah, not leak proof. <laughs> Linda McCavan. <laughs> oh, oh. He says the talking spot and will you tell them Sav and chat to stop talking? Chat to stop talking, Sprotty's fine and distracted. Is he? Yes. What? I'll concentrate on that. Alright. There's no there's a point. I hope you've got that one from Egomaniac, sir. I have, yeah. Yes. And you're back in the room. Well, before we go on, um, to take some questions from chat, because I, I take it there will have been one or two, can I just say this, though? People are mentioning about, you know, there's a lot of people who don't know about vape. How come? Yeah. It's not like it was two years ago because oh. every time you go to the news agent, there's e cigs there. You know, the, there's all this controversy every time there's a bloody advert on the telly that some bug is complaining about it. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that that's the case now. But what I do think is vapors don't vapor smokers. You see, I don't know the difference. <laughs> smokers don't understand that they don't need the mindset that they think they do because they think I've got to be ready it's all about willpower and I'm not ready at the moment and I think that stops them from picking up an e-cig and buying it Mm -hmm. because that's the only logical thing left the e-cigs are there Mm -hmm. if they want them but the biggest fear a lot of smokers have is failure that they let down their friends and family by failing at what they do. But isn't isn't that a lot because there are so many people who can get an audience who keep on using the quit term when it comes down to ACs? Well, yeah, because it just makes them feel the word quit means suffering. Mm. It's depriving yourself of something, isn't it? It's like the word diet. Deprivation, yeah, diet is a word yeah. I've banned in this house. See, how <laughs> can you have a word? How can that ever be good when it starts with die? I mean, come on. Uh, yeah. but the, fir- the first thing uh, uh, that, a, that a new customer who walks off the street will say in a shop is, I've come to quit the fags. I want one of those pen things and a bottle of oil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're in the wrong place, to <laughs> Isn't that because... Fresh out, of oil a, fresh out of oil and pens, yeah. <laughs> You know, they think, right, me willpower's there. Or like this lady who, this reporter wrote that piece. You know, she thought, I've got a chest infection, the doctor's just given me a right, you know, argument. I really need to go and do this. Yes, I'm going to do it. Which is when a lot of people go to the quit smoking clinics as well. You know? Uh, And those people feel that they could let themselves down, but... I know when you start thinking of quitting, and I hear it from so many people, 
you know, and they give every reason under the sun not to quit because they're terrified of failure. Yeah. Terrified of it. And I can totally relate to that. It, it but we haven't had any of that. Well, definitely no. not. Because all we've done is switch, and they don't understand that all you're doing is switching a, a fag for this. Mm. So you're getting, the only thing I miss is the cigarette lighter. You know, and the fact that a packet of 20 fags took up a hell of a lot less space. <laughs> <laughs> God, yeah. <laughs> but that's it, you know, the, there is no willpower involved. And I, there was a guy I was talking to not long ago, and he was on about a and he, he fancied giving one a go, but he didn't know whether he'd be able to have the will to carry on. I says, well, when you when you changed your brand in fags and went from senior service to captain full strength, did it take any willpower? No. And I says, what about now? What are you smoking now? Well, he says, Marlboro's. He says, what did you smoke before that? Oh, well, that was embassy number one. I says, and how much willpower did it take? Change from embassy number ones to miles back. Marlborough. Okay. He says, Wait, well, men, we just didn't have any embassy number ones in, and I like the taste yeah. of the Marlies better. I says, Well, get yourself an AC with a flavour you like. It's exactly the same as going from embassy number one to Marlborough, except right. except that it tastes even nicer because you get to choose the flavour the way you want it. Well, yeah, it's again, got the bonuses, hasn't it? Well, yeah. he lives next door now, okay. <laughs> but this is what we're saying, the word quit is the demon here, because mm. it sends all the wrong signals. Mm. The I must word switch is, is, is much kinder. I must admit, when the, the previous times that I did try to quit um, on NRT and Trampix and whatnot, every time I used that word before knowing fine well the day was coming, I never ever felt more depressed in my entire well, life. Well you're setting yourself up for failure aren't you because mm -hmm. you don't want to do it because then you're hit with that dread or oh, I'm not going to be able to do this, I don't really want to, it's going to be hard, it's going to be painful and you've already set yourself up for any type of attempt whether as I say it be diet, whether it be smoking, whether it's alcohol, drugs, whatever and it's Nah, quit just no depriving yourself of it stuff. Is. Unless it's you have to stop doing something for or you're going to die. That's not the the incentives just yeah. with so many people in chat and I mean I know you were saying you get bullied by family members, they try and make you feel, Oh well I have to do this, I have to do that and it, not very often it's the smoker themselves that goes, You know what? I've had enough of this. Mm. I, I was going to say, I'd love to know where they get these seventy percent of smokers want to quit. Because mm. I don't believe that. I don't know for a second. Most well, have you listened to the way the reporters put the question to a smoker? Though? You know, they, they'll make them, they'll belittle them by putting all the health arguments, and then the family arguments, and your children, and your grandchildren, and then the financial one. And of course you're going to then say, if asked the question, well, yeah, of course I'd like to quit, but, but they just don't continue with the but, you know. It's yeah. like that um, survey that Mark looked at, the quit smoking one, and you had to tick a box, Mark. What was it again? It was, I oh, can't remember the way they worded it, but it was basically, have you, have you tried to quit smoking? Uh, it asked you in one part and failed. Yeah. And then, then it asked you, have you tried any of these methods? That's right. So whatever you it answered, could... you were wrong, weren't you? Yeah. Well, that, yeah. that's, that's that's how they get their seventy percent. Yeah. yeah. At yeah. one point or another. False figures. Every, everybody, every everybody that ever smoked would have somebody getting on at them. With me, uh, it wasn't wasn't my wife because she was smoking. It wasn't the parents because they were both smokers. It was my doctor. And I, I mean, I, I never used to go all that often, but I, I well remember walking in one day and he said, Mary, he said, uh, first question, are you a smoker? I said, well, you live at the top of the street, you know, I'm fine, I'm a smoker. I said, well, here's something I'm going to tell you. If every time I'm coming in here, somebody's going to ask me, am I a smoker? I'm just going to get up and walk out and you'll be responsible for your death because we'll miss out on something here. So can you put it on the front of my records? 
not to ask us if I'm a smoker. And if I can go three years without anybody asking if I'm a smoker and telling us I should mm. pack it in, then I might consider packing it in. And he did, he was as good as his word. Mm. And I had to go back about 18 months later. <laughs> this was about 20 years ago. He wasn't in, and he's local, the standing, the sidekick. Um, said, are you a smoker? I said, you just put it back at any month, pal. Read the front of the bloody file, will you? Oh, I didn't say that. I said, you know, you can miss it. The letters are this big in the red. For God's sake, I'm coming right now. I can see them. Idiots. What are idiots? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Sorry. from chat, <laughs> from chat, David Drummond says, um, regarding getting smokers, Interesting, he says, the more we go about vaping in public, the more people will see it working. Less mm -hmm. said, more gained. I was going to say that before, he's right. Absolutely, I agree with that. Absolutely. Ego Maniac says, one benefit of vaping is as a replacement for the post coital smoke, dropping a hot ember on my chest hair always ruined the mood. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have before, but didn't have jump. <laughs> <laughs> it was the totally not related but <laughs> the every single top that you possessed had that little burnt hole in no. yeah I've, I've still got those it's the rolly yeah, burnt hole so, uh, that's yes. so why mm. I stopped smoking rollies and went back to normal I thought it's cheaper to buy normal tabs than it is new clothes all the time <laughs> 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 Paul XB oh. said, the first question we ask our customers is, do you want to use an e-cig? Because you can't be forced into using one. It has to be your choice. And Entropy72 said, quitting terrified me. I quit for a year once, and the experience was horrendous. I slipped back into smoking again and always swore I wouldn't put myself or those around me through that again. And mm -hmm. I can totally relate to that. Mm -hmm. I have quick coke mm -hmm. ones, not not the sniffy stuff, the drinky stuff. <laughs> and, and I was like a raging lunatic. I mean, uh, here's a suggestion, just on top of what you were saying about um, the, the 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 person who said about vaping in public, you know, just just being out there with the racing. And here's just a suggestion, just something I'm gonna pull here as a suggestion. Um, Instead of taking your, your Teslas and your Pavaris and whatnot, take an ego, you know, take an ego with a with a stardust or whatever on the top, you know, just have it handy so that if you're out in public and somebody does ask, you know, you can show them that because it might be easier for them to understand that than where it is for them to understand a Pavari because there's so many different things out there now. Um that people might just get freaked out, whereas it might be easier and similar that if you do happen to be out in public and somebody sees you vaping and they ask about it, they might understand it a bit better. It, it probably would, but that means I've got to carry extra stuff around with me. <laughs> well, no, but if you're going out for a couple of hours, what's the matter with going out with an ego in a, in a, in a stardust? You I'm know, just say, use a squib with a copper. I don't have an ego with the stardust. <laughs> well, but you, you do have that eye taste with I do, the yeah. I-16 on, which is similar. Yeah, I do. But if I'm going out, I generally don't think that I have to bring supplies out to show random people that are sitting in the street either. Well, you see, I understand, but I still think it's a good idea. It is. It's a good idea to have the likes of egos and stuff. Mm -hmm. But... It's Has one it? that I probably wouldn't be able to implement because I've got the world's worst yes. memory. I would have to leave an eagle with a stardust permanently in my handbag. Yeah. So this is what it looks like. Don't try it. It's been in there for six months and it's probably full of God knows what by now. But that's what it looks like. <laughs> that's the most demure thing I've got at the minute. I haven't got anything else. <laughs> I've always got an eagle with a C4 on top in my pocket. Mm. Just in case, because things always go wrong. I need to have a backup just in case. Yeah, <laughs> that's a very valid point. Yeah. The glove box in the car, just mm -hmm. in case. See, I, I used to have a backup in the glove box in the car, <laughs> but then I borrowed it. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it was just in case moment, yeah. 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 It's yeah. like sunglasses that you need yeah. in the car, and they're never there because the last time you walked, up, got out of the car with them you on. You had them on your face. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no. all the time. Yeah. I couldn't be that well organised. I could no. try. We'd have to have strategically placed egos all over the place everywhere I went. I would have to have like, 
I'm taking this jacket, it must have this in it. But I'd end up with egos stuffed in pockets everywhere. <laughs> I was going to say, just treat them like headphones, cat, but... Um, no. You have even more stuff all over the house. <laughs> oh, God. You ask that of me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we could take a picture. That might be easier. Have a picture of an ego with the thing on and go, that's what it yeah. looks like. Keep but it on you your phone. try this one instead. Yeah. Well, but you not, can buy one that looks like that. It, it'll not be long before you can take them into uh, various different chemists. I'll not name anyone in particular, but the one that's carrying the vibe's going to be carrying the uh, the new IntelliC. Which is mm, the X, mm. Excel X, or whatever Excel Pro or something, Excel isn't it? Pro. Yeah, the Excel Pro. Mm. Um, mm. That would be rather Is that not part of Microsoft Office? <laughs> 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 if it is, then it won't work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Spoken like a true Apple lady. <laughs> right, I'm sorry, I have to interrupt. Spirit is vapors. Just ask, is Team Talk live or pre recorded? You've really got to ask that question. Really? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of friendly pulse from D. Yeah. You shouldn't do that on camera, Dave. It looks wrong. Uh, here's your watch. Here's your watch. <laughs> <laughs> and I think chat must be pre recorded as well, then. Yeah, chat's pre recorded. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I live, though. Chat, can I just tell you? Team talk, all it is, I'll re this is the last time I'm going to tell you. After a regular show, we frequently all sit together in a hangout and discuss the show and what your reaction to it was, how we could have improved it, have a giggle and talk about the next show coming up. And many people wanted to join us in those chats, which is impossible as it's only got a maximum of 10 people allowed in a hangout. And we decided one night to put that live on air. And everybody loved it. They enjoyed the fact that we didn't have a script and we weren't talking. We were giving our own opinions on things. And that's all Team Talk is. And it's definitely live, I can assure you. And very much unscripted. There you Spiritus, go. Spiritus Vape was uh, <laughs> clarified a little bit. It was because he was watching on, on the YouTube and it had started at the beginning, not where we actually were. Oh, <laughs> now you can start anywhere on YouTube, can't you? Yes, yes. I'm going to swear at you. And the second word is off. <laughs> <laughs> it's very confusing with that sometimes it starts at the beginning sometimes it'll jump to live I haven't mm. quite figured out how to make it do it but I push buttons until it happens it's ok neither of they no, you'll, know they if it's, you'll know if it's live because mm. underneath on the black bar oh. you'll see a little dot Yeah, it says live now if, if the dot isn't lit up it means you're watching it on recorded mm -hmm. if you zoom it right along to where it won't go any further and the dot will turn red, that means you're live and you're watching it now. You can actually click on where it says live and it will go red and take you to where it is the latest point in the That's screen. That's what I what Dave thinking. said. Well, Dave said, yeah. <laughs> on that. I just thought I'd point that out. <coughs> click on where it says live. It I never knew red. that. As live as it gets. Mm. Yes. Yes. I would right, can we it. go to the second lot of adverts, please. No. And then come back and we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. Because yeah. oh. oh, okay, okay. I'm bored of this. <laughs> Got a little carrot milk. I get the green milk, milk in the new batch. I have to. Carrot milk. So, uh, <sighs> Still not good when you run out of carrot milk. No, it's not. Still milk on the eyes, like, still the eyes are back. You're not supposed to poke your eyes with the carrot <laughs> glass. <laughs> you do what you're doing it wrong. You want to see some of the carrot? I know, it's really yellow. Seems to be good. What? Yeah. Eh? Uh, Good God, that was loud. Mm. That's not okay. Oh, I was just getting... Oh. 
Oh, I've done an ads live. You know the ads aren't live. No, the ads are not live. They're recorded yet. We're in ads because we're famous. Yeah. Are they finished yet? We don't. Does piece of milk and mac easy? Your stomach really is getting worse. It's not mine, is it? It is, it is mine. Excuse me. I blame the hot cross buns right you're back in the room. It's the Come back in the room. Hot cross buns? The hot cross buns. Who's got hot cross buns? Me? Oh, I could just eat it. Easter, it? Turn the heat and down the press. It, it wasn't, wasn't hot. hot. <laughs> Some people just don't share. <coughs> I sent you two packs last year. What more do you want? No, you didn't. Water. I did, I sent yeah. your mother two packs of hot cross buns. Yeah, mate, I sent me mother, you didn't send me. <laughs> did you like them? I had punch. some crispy pancakes or something. Not pancakes, what were the donuts? <gasps> crispy creams. Crispy cream donuts. Who's had crispy? I feel like I've been murdered by death. You, you. <laughs> <laughs> you bought crispy cream. You had buns, <laughs> you didn't have them. Oh, me. the buns in my body. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Yetta and I, I did not work these days. Yeah. <laughs> right, what are we going to talk about? How is this? Oh, the knees up. <laughs> what? Knees up. Knees up. Knees up. Knees up. I don't know about that, but that moose has been watching you for the last five minutes, Kat. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started on the pronoun. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Knees up. Fifth of April. Hot ball of knocking. <laughs> and we've, we've got a little song, haven't we? Knees up at the crown. Knees up at the crown. Up the knees up, you must go. E -I -E -I -E -I Don't forget your liquid, your batteries, and your mod. Knees up, knees up. Ramp your expertise up. Knees up at the crown. Oh, oh. what a rotten song! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but that sounded scripted to me. I'm sure you're reading off a script there, Dave. I might have been. Right, yeah. uh, there's, there's lyrics written down. Yeah. Uh, okay. Knees up at the crown. Oh. 5th yeah. of April, 12 o'clock ish. If you can get there before Cliffy, you might be lucky and get a prawn cocktail. Ooh. Nah, you got to book them in advance on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> They're all sold out by the time I get there. Cliffy's had the lot. Yeah. I'm sure they all did the last time I was there. <laughs> And turned up and they'd already ordered them. <laughs> it's a good day though. We'll have a bit of a giggle, don't we? We do. Uh, it's a great day. Really, really good and, day. And, and, they'll <laughs> sign up sheets for EFVI.eu. Oh. Yeah, that will and be. And I said that before I saw it come up in chat. That's clever, <laughs> that is. Because <laughs> I'm psychic. Right, I've uh, got a question. It's a big question. So bear with me. Okay. Big question from Dex. Dex says, Hi guys, could I please have your view on this? I have just lost funding for a new bricks and mortar store due to the TPD. Not good. But here's the problem. Would you still open a shop and give it a go using your own money stroke savings for the two years until it all kicks in? It would mean me leaving the London Fire Brigade also, which is my bill pair. Oh God. Uh, Tim. Well, yeah, I thought I was going to get me on this one. Um, <laughs> I've looked at this in great detail, as you can appreciate, because it is my livelihood. And I think if things aren't converted into some sort of strange UK version of the TPD EC paragraph, um, in the next two years, somebody who does it will still come out of it with what they went in plus a little bit more. I think I think there's still there's still room to be able to you know take a punt and, and make some money there. I really do. But you've got no guarantee. You've got a business. After no, you, two you've years. got no guarantee. You've got a business when the law comes in. You could you could the shutters could be down and you could be stuffed for the remainder of the lease on the premises, which could be up to five years, depending on how 
soon in you know, how, how long you've been in there. Um, my advice would be is to go ahead and do it and when you negotiate your lease get a break after two years or after you know after a year and two years so that if things do go wrong whilst you're in there you've got a break that can get you out of the lease and uh, you know, save you obviously the embarrassment of uh, having to fork out for, for the extra years that are on there. Um, and most people now who are renting shops will be quite happy to put breaks in. So yeah, I think I think it's a yes from me. It's a thumbs up. Well, it would be a no from me. Mainly for one reason: you're part of the fire brigade. You've got a a damn good job with a pension, and unless you're really unhappy with that. Uh, I wouldn't be taking any risks, not in this day and age. And he, somebody pointed out in chat with all these e going on fire, we need them. <laughs> <laughs> so he could always money. go part time, couldn't he? Always go part time as a fireman. That's what I would. If I was, if I was going to do it, I wouldn't quit no. my job. But I mean, no. I don't know how flexible the London Fire Brigade are and shift patterns and things like that. Yeah. But I definitely wouldn't be happy leaving a job with, which is a pretty solid job, for something that you're not that sure about. Yeah. Well, look, look from the point of view of anybody starting any business, and not just E6. With any business at all, you've got to sit down and you've got to look at the figures. Mm. And you, when you're doing your forecasts, you've got to be as conservative as you possibly can with a small C. Mm. Um, certainly, when I opened the studio, we spent months and months going through the figures, and even then, got it wrong. Mm. Um, it should be relatively simple to get some idea of how well bricks and mortars in your area are doing. Um, that's relatively straightforward to see. If you go in and the business owner is looking bloody glum when it gets towards the end of the month, then they're not doing that well. I mean, I, I can only see ASICs growing over the next couple of years, but to be fair as well, there are, there, there's definitely going to be some kind of legislation and regulation. Mm. At this moment in time, we don't know exactly how it's going to be implemented. Um, I think you've got to think long and hard before you chuck in the current breadwinner um, and I'm saying in chat it's around about 30k a year you could easily quadruple that but you could just as easily go bust and at the end of the, 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 the day the decision has to be yours based on conservative sales figures and what you think your profitability is going to be. Yeah. Don't forget you're, you're talking about um, local business rates, the uniform business rate, and that can be an absolute killer. Mm. You could be paying twelve or fifteen hundred pounds a month in uniform business rate. You could be paying the same for your rent and your lease and your insurances and everything else. You've got to look at it really, really carefully. But that's the same with any business. It's yeah, not it just I mean there are there are there are sort of free rate deals available, small business rate rebates are available, um, which which do give people a, a rate free period. I mean an e-cig shop doesn't need to be um, a shop that's 20, 30,000 pounds a year to rent. I mean certainly from, from our experience down here um, the shops are around sort of 6,000 pounds a year um, with a small business rate rebate so you do get 18 months or so uh, without having to put your hand in your pocket for the rates. Um, Yes. Because, I mean, down, down, down here, these cigs are really well, really well established and really well accepted. I mean, um, there's been there's been some more shops for three and a half years down here, um, so people just think it's the norm and they're quite happy to sort of look for the shops. But if you're in an area where there's nothing, then you've got to do the hard work, um, and the hard work can mean sitting in a shop on your own for two days a week and not seeing a soul, you know. We've been there. We've been there down here. We've been there. So yeah, as Midge Dog said, you've got to go into it with your eyes wide open. Um, a solid business plan, and possibly in a business like this, uh, exit strategy. Yeah, I mean, exit strategy is is about getting the lease getting the lease right, so you can get yeah. it after twelve months or yeah. twenty four months or both. Mm -hmm. well, Absolutely. Think, from from from, I mean, and this is only my own experience. I think you've got to work on full rates, full everything, 
because that's what it's going to be when you get past. That's the what it's going to be. Yeah, you've, you've got to work on that, and it's it's a bit of a bonus while you've got the deals on, but you've got to know that you're going to be able to cover the overheads. But that's the same with any business. Um, it, it's just the way of business. Mm. That easy, really. Very good question, though. Very. Good There's another question just coming from Vapor Bob, who says, "Where do you guys think we will be in two years with E6?" Ooh. Um, That's... I think we've 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 got to look at what we think implementation is going to be like in the UK. Mm. And my feeling is that the MHRA is going to do its damnedest to get control um, and try and implement. Medicinal regulation. I really do think that's what they're aiming for. Um, but the the good thing, and I mean, I know we were talking about this the other day, is that document that was released um, about the from the ESA, the advertising. Mm. That looks a very sensible approach that they're sort of consulting on at the minute, which could give e-cigs a big push in the the time that we've got, whether it's two years, hopefully they'll give us that time, which could make things very interesting. Mm -hmm. it, it, mm -hmm. it would make things extremely interesting. I mean, if the advertising is done correctly, and it looks as though this consultation is going to come up with a, um, a blueprint that people will be able to conform to and will be able to advertise successfully, then we could see the uptake of electronic cigarettes in the UK skyrocket um, to the point where greater than 50% of current smokers are using electronic cigarettes. And there's, there's, there's no reason why they shouldn't, and every reason why they should. And this has got nothing to do with coercion or anything like that. It simply means that there's more choice for them in terms of flavour, in terms of performance, in terms of everything we know and love, if you like. Um, and that could completely change the landscape over the next two years, it just depends on how quickly implementation goes ahead, yep. and it depends on how quickly as well the ASA can get this consultation implemented such that advertising can take a big step forward and become all-pervading in every form of the media that's out there, which is mm. something I would love to see. Yeah. I mean, if there's, if there's that many people using electronic cigarettes when it's by the time that the uh, TPD is implemented in whatever way, shape or form that the UK want to do it, isn't it going to be a problem for them? Because it's going to be a lot of people with two fingers up. It's going to be a massive problem for them. Um, if, you've, if, if over the next two years, um, post-implementation of the ASA's guidelines, mm. they see that advertising is, is at saturation point and that take-up is moving towards you know, the vanishing uh, numbers of smokers reducing because they've chosen to go the AC group rather than lift tobacco by choice without yeah. coercion. That's they've right. got the signal and take notice, they can't not. Mm. Right. Yeah. yeah, interesting times ahead, as they say. For two not, minutes of the hour, guys. Yeah. Are, we, are we done, are we? Oh, no. <laughs> Anybody got anything to say for two minutes? Hi, uh, Dave should sing again. Mm. After the music, you must go. E -I -E -I -E -I go. Max Height's going to be there, and so is loads of other folks as well. And yeah, <laughs> so come up to the crown. Yeah, yeah that one wasn't quite as good as the no, other one. I'm one for the summer when I've got my new car that does 70 miles to the gallon because then I can afford to come. <laughs> Now we need to fit a verse with Tim's got a new car coming to the knees up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't afford to do it in the one I've got. <laughs> I can't afford to do it in the one I've got. I only live three men away. <laughs> <laughs> I want somebody to give us a lift because the beers there, the beers that are there are gorgeous. I'll uh, give you a lift if you can get to the tech tunnel. <laughs> one, of, one of my customers, uh, his, uh, his cousin's on the management team at the Crown. Ah. Yes. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm. And he, he, he wants to go. He wants to go. But if he wants to go, he can drive. He's a lorry driver. He's rich. <laughs> yeah, me and lorry yeah. drivers drive. Yeah. That's what they do, apparently. Yeah. If I get in the lorry, if I get in the lorry on a Friday, on, on the on the Monday, I'll probably be there by the time we get to the to the meeting because after he's dropped everything off, and I can just get out. 
Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. I love this. The knees. Mm. Yeah, it is. It's a good deal. Me and Dad's talking to Polish people at the knees. Polish people? Yeah. They weren't even vapors. for a drink. Well, they were vapors, but they weren't there for the knees to meet. They just come in for a drink and we're going to the vape and we thought they were part of the crowd. Yeah, hello, come and talk to everyone. And they just looked at us if we were deranged. They were right. They were. Possibly because some of us are. Most of us are. You've got to wonder what they were thinking when they came into a pub and found there was just vapours everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 actually, a quick, a quick question for Dave before we go off the air. Um, yeah. One of my customers wants to know what part of Sunderland do you come from because he sees you on the telly in the shop all the time. And right. he, knows, he knows the accent, but he doesn't quite know what part you come from. Well, I was actually born right in the centre of Sunderland, yeah. um, at the Royal Infirmary in Sunderland, um, and I've lived in New Harrington to the south west of Sunderland for most of my life. Uh, I spent uh, four years in Scarborough where I met the love of my life, fell madly in love. Um, I spent some time in Yarm because that was where we moved to first but the majority of my life has been spent in a place called New Harrington. Um, when, he come, when he comes in for his juice tomorrow I will I will tell him. The there you place. go. Because he did ask me to ask. Well, there you go. That's where I'm at. He's, he's, he comes from South Shields. Scott, he's asking, does the Crown do B&B? &B? Does the Crown no, do B&B? No, it does not. But there are loads of hotels. Schedules. Because it's a seaside, seaside resort. Yeah. It's a seaside town. Seaside yeah, town. So there are absolutely loads within 10, 15 minutes walking distance or two minutes in the car. Or 20 minutes staggering. 20 minutes and that's just one of us giving them directions yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well on that note I'm going to say that we've uh, I'm coming over to you in a second Daz that it's time to say good night and just to let you know, I'm sure you all know it off by heart. We've got Dave Kitson on Sunday with Dave's Tackle Box. Monday it's a Hayes Hour with Dave and myself and Keith. Tuesday it's Wait the Scene and DE Talk following that. And that brings us to Wednesday again when no doubt this group of no hope us will be here again. And then on Thursday it's a VT Talk. Daz, I'm sure you can fill us in on what's happening over in our Y4. Yes, and over in our Y4, tune in right after the show and you'll have uh, Nikki with Nikki's Juicy Bits. Uh, tomorrow, 10 o'clock, you've got me with the Twiglet Zone. Friday from 9, you've got Tim with uh, the Login. Saturday, you have Gaz with the Saturday set. Sunday is Rusty with Obscure by Clouds. Monday is Reggie, our newest DJ. Uh, he'll be on on Monday night. Um, Tuesday, you've got Rob with sub Sock Rolly Taylor. Rolly Taylor. Sock Rolly Taylor. Do you that again? Sock Rolly Taylor. It's easy for you to say. Uh, sock. Rock Solid. Rock Solid Taylor. Like that. Yeah, that brings us back to Wednesday. But I, I'm going to talk to Rob about that. See yeah. which you show him now. I think we should have a. a <laughs> Should be it, yeah. You, you, you do realise sock, sock rollerding is something entirely different, does. I'm going to Google it right after the show. You'll have to Google that. <laughs> You'll find it on Spankwire. On Spankwire, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, switch the safe search on before you do it. Okay. <laughs> so on that note, guys and girls, we're going to wish you all a very, very good night. Is that the right postcode? I don't know, I'm just saying it sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> Will you not just shut up? What? What? Keep you talking for when the ads are on. What? Good yeah. night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good, Good night, night, everyone. everybody. Bye. 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 Tune in. Be part. Hang out. And different talk. It's team talk. It's team talk. Completely uncomfortable. Yes. And guests, Team Talk. That's nice. And Merry Christmas back to Reggie. <laughs>
What? <laughs> what? What I miss? Yeah. Merry Christmas. I don't know. You wish me a Merry Christmas. I'm wishing it back. Any views or opinions expressed by the team or the guests are their own and not necessarily those of anyone they may be affiliated with. Nin, nin, nin. 